Hey, what's up? Science. That's what's up. So I've been working on my master's project all summer long, which I started last year as an undergraduate at Clark University. This project is looking at how nitrogen assimilation is regulated in diatoms. Assimilating nitrogen into the cell is really important for any organism, even if you're a small microorganism, like a diatom. Diatoms are photosynthetic microalgae, so they're like small trees in the ocean, well kind of, because diatoms are not plants, they're algae. And algae are not plants, they're protists. The best of us make that mistake from time to time. There are a couple different enzymes in diatoms that, you know, like to hang out together and assimilate nitrogen into the cell. This cartoon is a proposal of what nitrogen assimilation looks like in the cell of a diatom. We have enzymes working in the cytosol, which is the green, and we have enzymes also working in the chloroplast, which is the orange. Previously, I made plasmids to look at the activity of nitrate reductase, or NR. NR works in the cytosol to reduce nitrate to nitrite. NR's friend NIR, or nitrite reductase, then reduces nitrite to ammonium. You may notice there are two forms of NIR working in the cell. The NIR represented by the dark blue circle works in the cytosol, and the NIR represented by the green circle works in the chloroplast. I'm working to characterize the activity of the cytosolic NIR, or the dark blue one. Now what we want to know is how these genes interact with the environment. That is, if environmental signals will up and down regulate the enzymes. Well, we have previous evidence that the environment does have an interaction with the activity of the genes, such as certain environmental conditions will turn up the activity of a gene or turn it down. But we want to know where on the gene this happens. That is, where on the gene of NR or NIR something binds to the gene to turn it on or turn it off. And the way we're going to do that is by using plasmids. Plasmids are small rings of DNA which are fantastic for these kind of experiments. That's because we can manipulate the DNA on the plasmid in a test tube and then transform it or inject it into the organism itself. The work I was doing my senior year at Clark in the summer previously uh, was to create plasmids to look at the regulation of NR or nitrate reductase. This is the first NR plasmid. Here we have the promoter from the NR gene, the PNR, and we have the terminator from the NR gene, the TNR. In the middle of the promoter and the terminator regions from NR, we have GFP, the bright green segment. GFP is going to be our reporter gene. That is, the promoter and terminator regions of NR will drive expression of GFP, which then we can measure. The activity of GFP we can then directly relate to the activity of NR. We will then compare that with a plasmid that has a different terminator region. This terminator region comes from the gene actin, which has nothing to do with nitrogen assimilation. If the activity of GFP differs between the two plasmids, then we'll know something's happening at the terminator region. I completed the NR plasmids last year during my senior year. Now, this summer, I've been working on the NIR plasmids. The NIR plasmids are going to work the same way. We have the promoter and terminator regions of NIR, or nitrite reductase, flanking GFP. We will then compare the activity of GFP driven by the promoter and terminator regions of NIR with the activity of GFP on a different plasmid with the terminator region replaced with actin. Instead of starting from scratch to make the NIR plasmids, I worked off of the NR plasmids. But first and foremost, I needed to create the NIR promoter and terminator regions. To create the promoter region, I use GSPs, or gene-specific primers, to amplify a small section of the NIR promoter from genomic DNA. And I did the same thing with the NIR terminator. It actually wasn't quite as simple as that, because sometimes the PCR reactions to amplify the sections of DNA didn't really pan out. And there was a whole process this summer to figure out why that wasn't happening. Science can be a pain sometimes. Once we had the desired sections of the promoter and terminator regions for NIR, it was time to get to work. Essentially what we did was to cut out the NR plasmid promoter and terminator regions and then paste in the NIR ones. But we did this in two separate steps. My lab partner had already finished the promoter section of the plasmid, so we had the NIR promoter, GFP, and then the NR terminator left over from the previous one. So it was my job to add in the terminator part of NIR to the plasmid to finish with the NIR, GFP, 
NIR plasmid. And then most recently, I made the NIR actin version of the plasmid, this guy. This entailed cutting out the actin part of the plasmid from the NR one, the first plasmid, and then just pasting it into the NIR plasmid. Once the plasmids were finished, it was time to transform them into bacteria to grow them up and make a lot more copies of them. First, we add the plasmids to the bacteria cells and incubate it on ice for a little bit. And then we heat shock them in a water bath. We then let these bacteria cells grow up for an hour, and then we plate them and they grow overnight. If the bacteria grow after the transformation, we screen them. This is to make sure they have the plasmid that we wanted them to grow. If it's all good, we then prep the plasmids out of the bacteria cells. This entails growing bacteria in a liquid culture, centrifuging down this liquid culture to collect all the cells, lysing the cells open and collecting the plasmid DNA, and then we purify it so it's just plasmid DNA, not like genomic DNA floating around. Today, I have all four of my plasmids completed, that is, created and prepped in large quantities. So I have both NR plasmids from this past year, and then I have both NIR plasmids, which I just created this summer. Once we transform these finished plasmids into diatoms, we'll be able to measure the activity of the reporter gene, GFP, and relate that to the actual activity of the genes, NR and NIR. We'll then compare this to different environmental conditions and see how the activity differs. And that, in a nutshell, is what I'm doing for the rest of the summer and into the fall semester. And that is science for you.